Next, we have uh, Keiskate and Matsu uh, Chita. Yep, and, thank uh, you. Thank you, from mechanical and aerospace engineering. Uh, what yeah. makes impact resistant, uh, wood impact resistant? <laughs> All right. So, natural materials are full of adaptations accumulated over millions of years that allow things like horns, hooves, and bone to absorb large amounts of shock safely, even though they're lightweight. At the lab I work at, we study these natural materials to try and come up with the next generation of bio-inspired composites for the US Air Force. I happen to specialize in wood. Why? Because we've used it in every tool imaginable since the dawn of time. Everything from clubs to the stocks of heavy machine guns. And across time and civilizations, the surprising thing is we've only used a few species, walnut, willow, maple, to name a few, without really understanding why. It's all just trial and error. So I wanted to know why. I got a big gun and I started smashing a bunch of different wood to see which ones could absorb the most kinetic energy with the least mass and volume. But before we can understand what makes some wood better than others, we have to know what wood is. At the smallest length scale, wood is made out of long molecules called cellulose. These get wound up into hollow tubes called fibers kind of like the grip tape of a tennis racket handle. Then you get a bunch of these fibers together arranged in parallel, and you start to see something that looks familiar from your high school biology textbook. At each of these length scales that I just described, you see big differences between how impact resistant and non-impact resistant wood behaves. Starting at the top, in most wood species, when these individual fibers break, they kind of just snap off in half. But in impact resistant species, these fibers that are wound up will actually unspool. They'll helically unwind, which means many bonds are being broken, which means more energy is absorbed per fiber. You can also see how groups of fibers behave differently. In most wood species, these fibers are over adhered to one another, which means they don't have a lot of space to move around. So when a crack starts to go through them, it's instantaneous and they break apart. But in impact resistant species, these fibers aren't actually that adhered to one another, so they can slide past one another, shearing and bending, which adds a lot more deformation that they can take before failure. It's another mechanism of impact resistance. Finally, with the naked eye, you can see that in most wood, the crack just goes right through the middle, like when you split a log. But in impact resistant species, that doesn't happen because the fibers don't grow straight. They'll actually spiral around the trunk of the tree and not only that, but the handedness of that spiral will alternate once every few years. We call that interlocking grain, and it basically forces the cracks going through the wood to take all these winding crazy paths, which takes a lot more energy, which means more energy absorbed during impact. Combining all these tricks, impact resistant trees can absorb over twice the amount of kinetic energy that other trees can at the same density, which means if we can use these tricks, in the next generation of composites, we can get planes that are faster, stronger, lighter, and more fuel efficient. Thank you. Thank you very much, oh, thank you. Uh, Yeah, I learned a lot from your talk about oh, the, uh, uh, the resistance of the fibers in mm -hmm. terms of impact uh, resistance. So, the, um, you know, this is actually in the field that I've been uh, looking in. Oh, the okay. Different fibers. No hard so, questions, right? Just <laughs> no, it's a cross fiber, not a wood fiber, but I'm very fascinated with your work. Uh -huh. So, uh, um, well, tell us something about yourself. Uh, what's your dream vacation destination and why? Uh, I'd really like to see the mountains in Yunnan province in China. That's the crazy ones that are in the Avatar movies, and I just really want to go there and, like, hike around and stuff <laughs> and eat the yeah. food. Yeah, well, speaking of food, yes. what is your go your favorite go-to comfort food and why? So my heritage is Japanese, and I really like tenzaru soba, which is basically buckwheat noodles with deep fried vegetables and seafood on the side. So you got your fried stuff and you got your carbs. So you know, everyone likes that. That's universal. Tell us someone that who has impact on your life. And, uh... um, yeah, he's right there. Uh, Stand up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I made you stand up. That's one. Uh, we've been together for eight years now, and yeah, every night um, we talk about our research at the dinner table, so I've had a little bit of practice, and yeah, you always make me a better person, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs>